So what should we make of these numbers from HSBC? Well, Investex Ian Gordon joins me now. Ian, a bit of a letdown from Stuart Gulliver on his last day. Yes, I mean, if we look at the Q4 numbers in isolation, they were pretty grim. Um, there's a reported loss after the usual slew of one-off one items um, and on an underlying basis there was a miss on every line against analyst expectations. So a miss on revenues, miss on costs, miss on bad debts, miss on associates. And potentially more legacy issues looming, potentially one and a half billion dollar fine at the uh, Swiss private banking arm. Indeed, no, we're not at the end of the road but you know, just to put it in context, the exceptionals charge in 2017 was around 4 billion in 2016 it was around 12 billion so moving in the right direction but not yet not there yet and obviously a lot we, we've heard I mean for the likes of Goldman Sachs investment banking revenues down pretty well across the piece was HSBC anything out of the ordinary there it's true I mean HSBC normally outperforms at a weak market and so there was particular dis disappointment that quarter on quarter the underlying profit from global banking and markets fell 46% or down almost 40% year on year. So it was a particularly poor performance from that division, which skewed the numbers. If I try and be a bit more positive, there were one or two chinks of light. Um, business year to date has improved. Uh, the margin stabilised after a decade of decline. Uh, customer loans actually grew by 7% year on year, again after a decade of, uh, of a broadly flat performance. Except, I mean, it's, it's barely uh, increased revenues in line with costs, has it? Yes, and, and you covered it in the introduction. The return on equity increased to 5.9%. The target is 10%. I don't think that's achievable before 2021 at the earliest. So we saw Stuart Gulliver there squirming in front of the MPs when they were asking him about his Panamanian bank account. But, I mean, how are the history books going to judge him? Fairly kindly, do you think? Well, he took on a uh, pretty serious challenge. He had some ambitious targets at the outset uh, back in 2011 which soon became unachievable in the context of lower for longer interest rates, um, unanticipated conduct charges. And so here we are, what, seven years on, um, we're still talking about a group which has been repositioned, has strong capital, strong liquidity, but very weak earnings. Yeah, I mean, once upon a time, HSBC called, well, not that long ago really, HSBC called itself the world's local bank. I mean, now basically it's back to being a big bank in Asia with arms in the UK, the US and in a few other bits and pieces in between, isn't it? I mean, that's maybe a little bit unkind, <laughs> but, but, but I mean, you know, directionally you're right, you know, uh, over, over the course of the last six, seven years they've closed around 80 businesses or withdrawn from uh, geographies which either fail to meet group return targets or have other issues such as conduct as you again you alluded to in the introduction yeah so what can we expect from John Flint the new CEO well I think directionally it's more of the same uh, as I say yeah trying to be a bit more constructive there are some things which are finally moving in the right direction but yeah, we are still talking about an organization after all that uh, reshaping which still has a cost income ratio on an underlying basis in excess of 60%. Um, revenue growth is challenging. Its main growth market in Hong Kong and Asia is seeing significant uh, competitive pressure. So pressure on margins. Yeah, I'm calling out stabilising margins as a positive but the group margin is half where it was in 2005. All right, briefly, and we've got all the other big banks reporting later this week. I mean, HSBC is such a global bank. There's not much of a read across to uh, the other banks, is there really? It's pretty limited. I mean, as a sort of uh, quirk of history, Lloyds now has it within its gift to eclipse HSBC as the biggest yielding bank. It could deliver that tomorrow. If it doesn't tomorrow, it will do in a year's time. Oh, all right, we'll look forward to that. Ian Gordon from Investec, good to see you. Thank, Thank you. you.